How we teach our kids history has become a big controversy these days. The way people talk about slavery these days, you'd think it was a uniquely American thing that we invented in 1619. There's a lot of controversy these days over something called critical race theory, or CRT. Critical race theory, in a nutshell, is simply an extension of Marx's critical theory. Marx's critical theory simply says this, you divide people into groups, you pit them against each other. In America, everyone really does want to advance themselves as much as they possibly can. So what they found instead, those who wanted to divide Americans, use the bludgeon of race instead. Well, what's going on right now? Equity policy is the same as critical race theory. Deborah Flora of Colorado is the co-founder of Parents United America. She's also a key producer of a new film called Whose Children Are They? I would compare critical race theory as the very antithesis of the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement was effective because it was based on righteousness. It was based on human rights. It was about treating people as equals. And there's this little thing called the Constitution that has an equal protection clause, and the equal protection clause of the Constitution protects all persons. This is really a bottom-up movement of parents, grandparents, concerned citizens at kitchen tables and at districts all over the country. So we put together this film. I've had a good friend since I was three or five years old who's black and now critical race theory is trying to divide us and saying that we should naturally hate each other because we have different skin colors. I think that's child abuse. It's just robbing them of their innocence and you're not letting them have a childhood. The reality is children don't grow up racist. They are taught racism. And CRT, critical race theory, is teaching racism to a whole new generation just when we should be teaching them what Martin Luther King Jr. said, to see one another by the content of our character, not the color of our skin. The goal of critical race theory in our country is basically to divide people and separate them from one another. What is so tragic about this is how it manifests itself in schools is you tell a beautiful young child who has darker skin that they're a victim and can never achieve. That most Americans are not racist. They don't grow up and saying, oh, who can I oppress? But critical race theory says, if you're white, you're a racist. And this is so the antithesis. And you got to make reparations. You got to pay for it. You got to, uh, you got to say you're sorry for what some white person did years ago. And this is completely contra contrary to the Bible. The Bible says we should be uniting people. We found out that kids as young as six and seven are being taught critical race theory, right? I mean, kindergarten, right? Critical race theory keeps tearing apart what Jesus died to bring together. And we cannot solve racial issues and unity issues by shouting at one another across racial fences. It's law, not gospel, that's going to deal with this sin. And it's perpetual. It's perpetual penance. It's never done. It's never finished. You're never forgiven. You're never redeemed. There is no redeemer and there is no redemption in the religion of anti-racism. Because of the way critical race theory harms children, the Alliance Defending Freedom, ADF, has gone to court to fight against it. Well, ADF has filed a lawsuit in Albemarle County, Virginia, on behalf of five families who are challenging the practice of critical race theory in their children's classrooms. It forces children to participate in the practice of identifying themselves and others as oppressed or oppressor based on these immutable characteristics. And it forces students to admit guilt just because they are a member of a group. One of the parents in the case, her son is multiracial. He's black, white, and Native American. And he's proud of his ancestry, all parts of it. But the school is focusing so much on race that it is causing him to feel uncomfortable with other students focusing so much on his race and teachers as well. And so when his mother went to school to talk about this, the teachers told her that the solution would be to segregate him physically in a different classroom with other African-American students 
And this is so backwards. This is taking us back to a time in our country when children were seen primarily through the lens of race. And so his mother objected to this. She joined the lawsuit. And all students should have an educational opportunity where they are not treated differently based on their race. We hope that by defending these five sets of parents, the court will stop the school district from practicing critical race theory in the classroom. Racism is racism. And you cannot use racism to eradicate racism. Critical race theory really is racism in reverse. But if you bring up critical race theory, many school officials or politicians on the left will say that it really doesn't exist, or if it does, it's negligible. Often, uh, parents will stand up and they would challenge the school board about CRT, and the administrators will respond, we're not doing CRT, we're doing culturally sensitive learning. We're doing educational equity. We're doing social justice. We're doing DEI. And so they would try to shut down the parents when actually they are doing critical race theory. Critics note that CRT has permeated much of the public school system, and sometimes even private schools. We're having our Wizard of Oz moment that critical race theory is this tiny little man behind the curtain that's being manipulated to look like this boogeyman. Um, so that's common today, but it's not true. It's fundamentally not true. Uh, critical race theory is imperial. It's the dominant ideology uh, on many college and university campuses today. It's not just there. It's not just targeting 18 to 22 year olds primarily. It's now in many school districts. Uh, it's now being taught in different forms uh, as the way to see humanity. It's everywhere. It's targeting our children. It's targeting our grandchildren. And we need to recognize. Critical race theory has been very purposely hidden from parents. Most parents had no idea. The silver lining of COVID is that is when parents became aware of what was really going on. When critical race theory is practiced in the classroom, it harms students of all races. It teaches minority students that they are permanently oppressed. It diminishes their sense of agency, the idea that their effort can actually lead to achievement. For instance, they showed a video to students that said basically only white people can live in big houses. And after watching that video, a Latina student was very discouraged and concerned because her family had taught her that she could achieve anything in America, that she could fulfill the American dream. But the school was teaching her the opposite, that her potential was limited by her ethnicity. Well, is there any hope in fighting critical race theory in our schools? There are over 154 million parents in the country. Now, you add on top of that a little bit under 5 million teachers. Well, half of those teachers are probably parents themselves. Then you add grandparents, you add concerned citizens. And when we realize that we hire and we fire school boards, we now understand the power that is right at our fingertips. Every single person voting, even if they don't have children in school districts, we all have a vested interest in the future of our country and our children are the future of our country. It seems that with uh, the critical race theory, the way it's being pushed, it ignores all the things that have taken place that, that um, have been beneficial, that shows that people can work together across racial and ethnic lines. We believe that the critical race theorists, that they are giving America a black eye and that they are burning down the house and the house is our nation. No one is saying that slavery and some of the racism that has happened in our history should not be talked about, taught, exposed, and condemned. But the young children who are learning that should not be condemned. That is what is so dangerous about this. It, it strikes at the very heart of our Judeo-Christian values, of the founding of this country, of the Western civilization idea that parents and family are the cornerstone. So that's why we all need to be aware. It is essential to this fight, not just for our children, but for the future of our country.